This video shows a simplified design for a logic circuit that will control access to memory chips. Later videos will look at this in a little bit more realistic detail. One address line can select two memory locations. For example, here's the one address line and these are the two memory locations at the address 0 and 1. Two address lines can select four memory locations. So here, for example, we can see the memory that I've split up into four locations. Those are the addresses. And these are the two address lines here. For example, if I was to put a zero on here, that selects this address. If I was to change this now to a one, it selects this address here. For this example, if I was to make both of these zero, it selects that address. If I was to make this zero and one, this would select this address here. If I was to make the address lines one and zero, it select this address. And if I was to make them both one, it would select that address there. Now if we look at this example here, we can see there's one address line. And if we want to know how many locations, we raise two to the number of address lines, as you can see here. And that means we have two locations. This example, we can see we have two address lines. So we raise two to the power two, where that's the number of address lines. And consequently, we can work out that we have four locations in this particular case. Let's draw a schematic representation of an address bus here. So I'll label this up as the address bus. Now put a line through there and put an 8, which means we have 8 address lines. Now that means that we are addressing this memory chip. And consequently, we'll have 2 to the 8, which gives us 256 locations. So in this case, if we've got an address bus with 8 lines, it will allow us to address one of 256 memory locations. So if I draw another schematic representation of an address bus and I say it's got 10 lines, well that's going to allow us access to a memory location that has 2 to the 10 or 1024 memory locations from the top to the bottom here. And that's because the address bus we can see had 10 lines. Now the first location in this memory is addressed by the following binary pattern, which when we convert to hex we can see is 0, 0, 0. The last location will obviously be addressed when all of the lines are 1. And if I convert that to hexadecimal we can see we have 3 FF. Consequently we can see that the first location is represented by that hexadecimal number and the last location is represented by 3 FF. When talking about memory it's usual to refer to a memory map. And this is quite simply a diagram like this where we show the first and the last location. Put a couple of squiggles in between to say there's more locations between these two points. And label the first and last location with the appropriate address. Now this is 1K of memory, which is 1024 locations. A memory map for two 1K memory chips will look as follows. We start off drawing the first chip and then we draw the second chip areas we label them as appropriate chip 1 and chip 0 as you can see here and then we label the first and last address for each of the chips now that area is for 1024 locations and this one here is 1024 locations now in total we will have 2048 different locations therefore we will need 11 address lines to address two 1K chips. Now what I'll do here, I'll draw a schematic diagram of these two memory chips. And I'll label this one chip zero and this one here chip one. And I will need a chip select going to each, which is responsible for switching them on. And here I've got my address lines, as you can see here. And I'm going to label this as an address bus and say there is 11 lines, which go from A0 through to A10. Now, to each of the chips, we take part of the address lines, in fact, 10 of them, from A0 to A9. And the same to this. This one also gets A0 to A9. We put a little 10 there to say there's 10 lines. Now, A10, which is the 11th line, goes to both chips. But in this case, it goes through a NOT gate to the chip select. Consider the address lines. They go from A0 all the way through to A10. And what I'm doing here, I'm just starting off at A10. 
I'm writing all of the address lines as a header to the binary pattern that I'm going to send on the address bus. And the binary pattern I'm going to send is all zeros, as you can see me writing down here. Now, these 10 are the address lines that go to each memory chip. Whereas this one here, we can see, goes to the chip select of chip 0 and goes to the chip select of chip 1 via the NOT gate. So this will become a 1. Consequently, this one is on and this chip is off. So all of this, all 11 lines, have been responsible for selecting the first location in chip 0. Let's choose the following pattern to go on to the address bus. So let's have these all a 1, but this one a 0. Now it means these 10 lines go to chip 0. So all 1s go to chip 0 and to chip 1. But this particular 0 here goes to the chip select, as you can see here, and makes this chip select a 0, which switches this chip on. However, it also goes to chip 1 via a NOT gate, so this becomes a 1 and is therefore off. Consequently, the only location to be selected is the last location in chip 0, because it's received all 1s to select it. Now chip 1 also received all 1s, but of course it was switched off, so it simply cannot take note of the 1s that we've sent it, because in the a10 position, we arranged it at the NOT gate, ensured that chip 1 was switched off. Now we'll choose a different pattern again, and on this occasion I'm going to make from A0 through to A90, but I'm going to make A10 a 1. So all of these lines go to chip 0 and to chip 1. However, this line definitely goes to both, but it goes to the chip select here, making that a 1, so that's switched off. It also goes via the NOT gate to the chip select here, that changes it to a 0, so chip 1 is on. Consequently, the first location in chip 1 is selected. Now what I'm going to do is to choose this binary pattern here, and these 10 go to both chips along these lines here, and of course this position here, this A10, it goes here to make that a 1, which switches that off, and it goes here to make that a 0 and switches this on. So we end up selecting the last memory location of chip 1. 